Hello, I'm Jonathan Womack, pastor of Plainview Baptist Church. We want to welcome you as we join together in our service, worshiping God, hearing His message, and you have a message that I want you to hear tonight. So I hope you'll stay tuned as we look at how you encourage me. That's what I said, how you encourage me. And we're going to look at just the many ways how God uses each of us to encourage each other during this time, how that we must be unmovable, unshakable when it comes to our faith and how we need to see how God is going to prosper us even in the midst of tribulation. That and much more right here on the Wednesday night study entitled, How You Encourage Me. Stay tuned. I'm Pastor Jonathan Womack. Welcome back. I hope you are having a wonderful Wednesday evening. We're actually filming tonight for our Wednesday night study in front of Providence Baptist Church. It's located in Warren County. Now, this isn't the normal place that uh, I come from. I actually pastor, as most of you are watching from, Plainview Baptist Church. This is one of our sister churches who has, like other churches, been struggling because of the COVID-19 some of the many restrictions. Now, very soon, they'll be making their announcement on how they're going to be opening up their services. Just like we're doing services drive-in, we want to encourage you to come be with us each Sunday morning, Sunday night, and just an encouraging time for us to come together, hear God's Word. We start our regular message and worship service at 1030. Come at 10 a.m. where you can be blessed with many teachers who's, who's coming at 10 to 1030. 
and bringing God's Word. And then the night service, 6 p.m., once again, another drive-in service that we'll be having at Plainview Baptist Church. For all the folks who's watching and, and noticing this for the first time, you recognize uh, that I'm standing in front of Providence. What's happening with Providence? We all need to be in prayer for them as they uh, we want to encourage their members as they begin the first processes of opening back up. And so uh, I'm, I'm encouraging them to keep on keeping on, just like I do, do you as members. Encouraging words is one thing. What we're going to learn tonight is how we can encourage one another and how you can encourage me. The greatest way that you can encourage me isn't by words, not only by deeds, but showing your heart and your heart is towards Christ. That's what Paul said. Actually, why don't you go ahead and grab your Bibles as we come together in God's Word and join each other in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 6 is where we'll start at. And then we're going to start back at the very first of this. But we, we want to read this, the very essence of what Paul is getting to. But now when Timothus came from you unto us, and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrances of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all of our afflictions and distresses by your faith. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. And so Paul was letting the, the whole church there at Thessalonica know that they was encouraging him, how? By their words? Saying, Paul, we, we're praying for you. Was it by their deeds? No. He actually mentions it in these first verses. He says, therefore, brethren, we are comforted over you in our affliction and distress by your faith. First and foremost was the faith that that church had. Let me tell you something. Uh, how you want to encourage others in the body of believers during this time when there seems like there's so much distance? Just what we're doing tonight. We're encouraging our fellow brothers and sisters here at Providence Baptist Church to keep on keeping on. When you can't meet in regular service, many of them has not had the chance in the last few weeks to even come in the house of worship. They didn't get the opportunity for a drive-in. There's many churches that may be watching tonight. You're not getting to do a drive-in or you're not getting to be over the airways or online. And so we want to encourage you to keep on keeping on. To, to think about the very essence of what you are as a church. And there will come a time when you can join back together. Very, very soon, Tennessee's already re reopening, and so there will be stages of that where you can come back and worship. I encourage you from a pastor's heart, don't give up. Keep on standing where Christ has put you because there's going to be great blessings. And that's what Paul was encouraged about. It was the faith that the church had. Let me ask you this question. How much faith do you, have. Now you notice I said first, how much faith does the church have or how much faith the church did have? And the church is the body of believers. If you don't have faith, then the church don't have faith. We as the body of Jesus Christ have been given faith so we might show faith. We've been given faith so we can show faith. Let me, let me just remind you, he mentions a very important point in all of this as he opens up. And the very last part of that, it says, For now, in the 8th verse, For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. W what did that have to do? Was, was Paul living because of the other people in the church? Well, of course not. He was given power from on high. He was anointed from the heavens so he could preach and teach the gospel message. But what he's saying here, he was encouraged. If, if we go to this passage, I want you to see this. Just for a moment, turn your Bibles in Acts chapter 18 and verse 1. I want you to read this with me. This is during this time he wasn't able to communicate with them. Now remember, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have video, so that he, he was worried about them. But then Timothy sent him word, which was very encouraging. I want you to see this in Acts chapter 18 verse 1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found certain Jew named Aquila. Uh, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, uh, and it goes on, and came unto them, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them, and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. 
And he reasoned in the synagogues every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timothy, or Timothy, were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit. He was pressed, just like so many of you have been very pressed the last few weeks or the last few months because of all this going on. You haven't been able to come to church. You haven't been able to worship God in the normal atmosphere that we were so used to. And so here Paul is in the same situation. He was in a different area. He was distressed. He was pressed in the Spirit, just like so many of you was. But look what happens. As Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ, so he was not stopping what he was doing, just like we can't stop preaching Jesus Christ during this time. We're going to keep on keeping on. We're going to keep on preaching the message of Jesus Christ. And you need to keep on preaching the message of Jesus Christ. All the churches that may be watching us that's not able to meet, all the churches that testifies of Jesus Christ and His salvation, don't give up because Christ is showing us just what He can do in the midst of more than just a sanctuary, in the midst of more than just a temple. God is showing us what the church really is. And I want you to see here in Acts, this is when this come to pass. He was being pressed in the Spirit. He was worried about the church. Here's where Timothy shows up in the fifth verse. And when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. He was encouraged. How? Well, let's go back to his word. I want you to see just what was taking place in his life and what he needed to overcome, even in his own life, even Paul. It was not only by his emotional turnaround, it was God's hand using his people of encouragement. Not by words, like we said earlier, not by deeds, but by their hearts and their hope that during trying times, they would be fruitful and fruitfully established. Established in their hearts. And you're going to see that. And when you're established in your heart, you'll be established in your faith. And when you're established in your faith, you'll be a conquering person by faith. You'll be a conquering person by the victory and the power of God. In all these ways, the victory will see us through these circumstances. If you look at Thessalonica and the church situation that Paul knew there was a young church, they was in a whole new world, when I say that, just like the lessons we've been looking at, we're in a new world today. The Thessalonica church was in a place where they needed to follow Jesus Christ. It was very important for them to do that. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timothy, or Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborers in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. And so he sent Timothy back to establish them. What does that word establish? Why was it important that they did that? Because this distance that Paul had with the Thessalonica church, he was afraid would hinder their faith. And so he wanted them established. What does that word establish? Set and to fix firmly. To settle permanently. It means to be fixed. And so he wants them to be established. I want you to be established in your faith. Has this circumstance of the COVID virus left you uneasy? Has it turned your faith uh, where you need to strengthen your faith? I'll be honest with you, I can see where it will. There's been trying times. There's people who's lo lost their jobs. There's people who will lose their jobs. There's some trying times ahead of us. But d does this mean that we're going to stop? Does this mean that we won't be encouraged by the power from on high? and be encouraged from our brothers and sisters. This is this time that we stand ready as, as we go on to see Paul encouraging the church here, that we continue in the third verse, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. And he was talking about how they could be discouraged from the afflictions that Paul was going through. I don't want you to be discouraged by what I go through. And Paul didn't want them to be discouraged by the afflictions they was going through or he was going through or anyone else. Well, how is that possible? Only by the power of God. Is it, a, is it something that's fiction? No, it's real. And God's going to show us that by encouraging each other. He says that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed 
there unto. He, he basically puts everybody in the same boat. He says we're called for certain afflictions. If you thought that the church was all for the good times and the good times of fellowship, for the lights and the great sound and all those glorious things that no doubt God gets glory from, if that's all there is to the church, then friends, we're in trouble. We are for so much more. Thereunto, as Paul says here in the King James, we're called to these times of afflictions so that we can be made manifest to glorify God in such a mighty way that we can't even imagine it. I want to encourage Plainview Baptist Church. I want to encourage Providence Baptist Church. I want to encourage every church that's a part of the true church, the living Christ that proclaims the salvation of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you to keep on keeping on and not be moved by afflictions. Let me tell you something. The reason that this message is so really true today is there are so many Christians who've been moved already. You need to move back to where God wants you. You need to be established in the faith. You say, Brother Jonathan, people wouldn't understand what I'm going through. You might say that there are so many reasons against you that that's why you have moved from being so faithful to the church or basically trying to encourage others that you have been so distraught from all this mess that you just had, had a loss of heart. And let me tell you something, it's easy to do during this time, but we can't do that. Let me tell you why. Because God Almighty wants to give you the power to get through it. Let me give you a short example. This next person was King David. And King David, even though he was king, he had a whole lot going his way. He had a whole lot going against him as, at a certain time in his kingship. During the time that he was reigning, here's what I mean by that. When King David had brought his life to destruction by sin and the curse of sin, others had turned their back on him. Many others had turned their back on him. Not only that, but some of his own children was trying to kill him. Um, here is what he knew. This is why he kept his faith, not by his own will or his own power, but by believing and trusting by faith that God was going to do a mighty work. He was very discouraged. Let me remind you that God is a forgiving God. He wants us to come to know Him. He wants us to know Him so deep that we realize that God is a forgiving God. He's here, ready to listen. There will come a time when it will all be judgment. And God wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants you to move forward, not backward, not in the, in the place of defeat. Let me read you a few words from David, this same David who knew of God's strength and power. Turn with us, Psalms chapter 30 and verse 3. Here's what he said, O Lord, Thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. He goes on to say, Sing unto the Lord, all ye saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. God is so mighty. He remembers even us in the midst of our turmoil, in the midst of our, our trouble. God remembers us. And He wants us to hold on to this fact. It goes on to say in the fifth verse of this beautiful Psalms, For His anger endureth but a moment. In His favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Do you believe that? Do you believe there's joy coming from all of this? I believe there is for the church. I believe we need to hold on knowing that morning's coming. As he goes on to say, And in my prosperity I said, I shall never be moved. See, in his own prosperity, David the king said, You know what? I'm not going to be moved. But he found out he could be moved. He couldn't trust in prosperity. We have to trust in God in times of good, in times that we're on the mountain, in times we're in the valley. It goes on to say this, Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. He goes on to say, thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. It wasn't God that was hiding his face. It was that David was not seeing God. There was a time in David's life with all this sin that basically he had hid himself from God, wanting to sin. And so he was realizing that he had not turned against him. As it says there, Lord... By thy favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. 
I cried unto thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on, upon me, Lord. Be thou my helper. So David's crying out to God saying, Help me in this time. Help me during this time that I need your help. Hey, listen. Churches all over the world needs your prayers to God. Church, you need to be praying that God help you during these times. Let Him be your helper. He says in the 11th verse of Psalms 30, Thou hast turned from me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end, in the 12th verse, To the end that my glory may sing praise to Thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to Thee forever. See, that was the heart that David had found in the Lord, trusting in the Lord. Now let's go back for just a moment. Now you heard the words of us praying to God when we feel like we're being moved backwards by Satan or by the calamities of this world or by the COVID-19 and all these things that's coming against us in today's world. Let me tell you something. Paul also in the New Testament is wanting to remind the church of Thessalonica not to move back, not to be moved, but to keep the faith and keep on doing what God has called us to do. I'm encouraging you tonight to do the same thing. As we join together as brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter what Satan tries to do, I know God has the best for us. All things work unto those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Hey, let me tell you something. God's going to show us so many things through this if we'll only listen. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4. For verily, this is Paul talking back to the church. When we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tri tribulation even as it came to pass. And you know, see, the church knew of this tribulation. They knew some of it. They knew that when Paul was with them that there would come tribulation. In the fifth verse, he says, For this cause, when I can no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. So he, he knew that even when he was with them, that this time would come. During this time that you're in, as a Christian, or as a person who don't even know Christ, learn by faith, trust in faith, and start following Jesus Christ. You can get through this, not on your own. And especially if you're not saved, how can you possibly get through anything in this life without trusting in Jesus Christ, without following His Word, His message, His truth? It's very important that we do this. And so Paul was encouraging the church the same thing. I want you to see this in verse 6 as we read together. But now, when Timothy came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our afflictions and distress by your faith. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. Now that's that earlier verse we had got to in the very beginning of this message, how important it was for him to know that they was continuing in the faith. That's what he was standing on. He was being encouraged by that. And it goes on. It don't stop there. Let's read the rest of that now. In the ninth verse, For what thanks can we render to God again for you? He says, I thank God for you. Like tonight, I thank God for what you have done and what you keep on doing. By God's presence, by His power, what the church keeps on doing. You keep on doing it because by you doing that, that is what encourages me. By you keeping on preaching the gospel message, that is what encourages me. Here's what he says in the rest of the ninth verse. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. He says he wants them to grow that word perfect there means a word of growth. He wanted them to grow during what? A time of crisis? Yes. During this time of crisis, he wanted God to perfect 
perfect their faith, just like I want this time, not to be something that puts you backwards, not something that makes you fall back, but that you move forward in a true discipleship of Christ so that you can be strong and live by faith, not by sight, because God wants you to live by faith. He goes on to say this, so that and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God Himself, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, direct our way unto you, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another and towards all men, even as we do towards you. So one of the encouraging things, once we start moving in the right direction, not being moved by Satan, but moving in the right direction, is we're going to love one another, not just ourselves, but to all men in all the world. Listen, this is an important time for we as Christians to show the rest of the world the love of Jesus Christ. You know what the love of Jesus Christ is? Not just going to church, not just doing our good deeds, but showing our hearts how real it is towards all of mankind. Not being selfish, not being self-righteous, but truly holding to the faith, loving one another. Hey, listen, members of my church, members of Providence Baptist Church, We've got to love the whole community. We've got to continue to love one another and not only love one another, but love the whole world in such a mighty way. In the 13th verse, to the end, he may establish. There's that word establish, which means establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. I want your hearts to be established during this time. You know why it's so important for us to encourage each other? Because we need each other right now. We need to do this together. And the only way we can do that is for you to be reminded that by your faith, by you showing yourself, showing Satan, that you're not going to be put down or discouraged by all this. You're going to trust by faith that God's going to get us through this. You encourage me as you keep on keeping on. Will you encourage me in that way? Just like Paul needed encouragement, I need to see that you have the faith in you to keep on keeping on. We've got to do that for each other. We want to take this time to encourage Providence Baptist Church and all other churches that's not been getting to meet regularly. They might not have been able to meet in a drive-in. They might not have been able to go online. So we want to encourage them in the coming weeks to open up with so much fire, so much desire that they'll continue to establish their faith in Jesus Christ knowing that He has great results waiting for us to see. Like David said, through the night we may see some tribulation, but there is going to come a morning. And when that morning comes, it's going to be glorious. I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing from the church. I want to encourage other churches to keep on keeping on, to live by faith, not by sight, and see what God is going to do. We're going to close with a prayer. I want you to pray with me as we bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for your message. We thank you for your encouraging words tonight to encourage our hearts and to remind us as Christians that we are together in this, that we need each other. And the best way that we can encourage is for the, the brothers and sisters and the rest of the world to see our faith as we walk strong, in you, not by our own power, but by your power. Right now, we pray for those who's watching who may be sick. Father, the many prayer requests that's been shared. Father, we just pray for them. We ask that you be with them. And Father, you anoint this message in such a mighty way. We'll give you all glory and praise of everything that's done. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let me remind you to be a part of our services at Plainview Baptist Church. To be a part of church services that's part of the true church all over the world to go back to church in a safe setting. As we reopen, don't be discouraged, but keep on living by faith. Keep on searching His messages for you, and you'll be blessed in a mighty way. Go to our website to find out more about our preaching and teaching opportunities at www.plainviewbaptistchurch.org. I'm Pastor Jonathan Womack. Until next time, I hope to see you again. If I don't see you here on earth, I hope to see you in heaven. The only way you can get to heaven is to truly know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Until next time, may God bless you.